Hello everybody, Richard here, library storyteller, taking you back to that walled city where the group of story lovers are waiting. And the storyteller comes with his broad brimmed hat and he's wearing a nice cloak and he sits down and he plucks a few pieces of grass. Then he says, you're probably wondering what it would be like midnight in that dark city that dark city of wonders on the top of the hill by the palace a strange company has assembled twelve desperate men brigands and a lad the ash boy a simpleton and finally the Emperor himself in his cowed cloak. And the Emperor reaches into a deep pocket and pulls out a heavy key and unlocks a door. And then he says, This is where I keep my things. You, boy, go inside and bring out the horse. And the ash boy, who knows nothing but the ash of a fire and the bustle of a kitchen and is now completely alone, says, Oh yes, I'll go, of course I'll go. And he steps inside into that dark room and he sees inside the darkness there's something glowing. Precious stones scattered all round the room. And by their dim light he sees that the room is filled with objects, carpets and lamps. And he says, Oh, it's over there. And he makes his way through all this clutter and lumber to where he saw the silhouette of a wooden horse. And he pushes a carpet away from it and he pulls a large bronze lamp out of its path. And then he pushes it outside. They gather round it. And the emperor says, there it is. There it is. And when those three old witches gave it to me, I was foolish enough to sit on it. And I pulled the lever by the saddle and it went flying up. I only came down to earth a long, long way away and although I started as a king's son, when I landed, I was no better than a beggar. It took me a long time to get home. And by then, my brother had taken the kingdom and I was dressed in rags. But I'd learned things on the way, yes. And I'd learned something else, said the Emperor with his voice coming from beneath the cow. I'd learned nobody will help you. You have to help yourself. Those desperate men, the brigands, crowded round the Emperor, looking at him solemnly. But the ash boy, had wandered towards the horse and had climbed onto the horse and had found the lever by the horse's saddle and had pulled the lever. Suddenly the horse flew into the air and the ash boy was on it. It was swaying, it was swinging, it was lurching and he was holding on. He said, help! And he, he pulled the lever again but it just went higher. Help! And down below, the brigands looked up, and the emperor started to shout, Bring it back! Bring it back at once! Bring it back for me! And he looked at the brigands, Take what you want! Take what you want in that room! But bring back that horse! But the horse was far away by now, and the ash boy was 
was holding on for grim life. It flew higher and he held the neck and he saw something, the bright gleam of the sun. He closed his eyes and then when he looked down, he saw so far away, so small, trees, a river, towns, and far away the glimmer of an ocean. But he didn't want to look anymore. He closed his eyes and the horse flew on and then suddenly it went up and then it lurched down and then it went level and then it flipped down and then it belly flopped into a tree. Slither. The ash boy fell off the horse. Thwack. He was wrapped round a branch. Thump. He fell to the ground next to a pool of water. Splash! The wooden horse fell into the pool. Oh! Whoa, said the ash boy, getting to his hands and knees. I don't feel good. Oh! He said, standing up. My side. Whoa. Then he realised that two people were looking at him. Or at least I should say one person and one cat. It was a young woman in a beautiful golden dress and a cat standing tall on its hind legs. And the ash boy said, Who are you? Well, it seems to me that we could ask you the same question. Oh, he says to the ash boy, well, I, was, I went for a walk and I met some men on animals and we went to a city and we went to the top and there was a, a wooden horse and a, I got on the horse and it flew in the air and now I'm here. I just want to go home. And the young woman looked at the ash boy. And she said, well, that's funny because I went for a walk as well and I met three old ladies. And this cat. And I got three presents. And we went flying through the air and we went over that mountain and then we landed here and, you know, I, I want to go home too. And the ash boy looked past her and he saw that in the middle distance there was a great mountain, a curious mountain that seemed to be made of glass. And from within that glass there came a glow like the setting sun or like the rising sun, a glow that cast a light all around them. The ash boy said, how are we going to get home? The princess said, wait a moment. She reached inside her pocket and she pulled out a little nut. She said, this was their last gift, wasn't it? And the cat looked at her and said, yes, I believe it was. Why not crack it? And so she took it in her fingers and squeezed and it cracked. And poking out of that crack, there was a little piece of thread. She pulled the pieces of the nut away and she pulled it was silk and as she pulled it it got thicker and as she pulled that it turned into material and as she pulled that she pulled out a silk cloak and she looked there was more another silk cloak there was more another silk cloak there was more it 
looked like the top of a feather. A hat with a feather. A second hat with a feather. A third hat with a feather. And each one of those three put on a cloak, put on a hat, they looked into the distance and winding away from them over the top of a hill there was a path and the cat began to run, run down that path and the princess walked down and the ash boy ran after her hey where are we going she said let's just go where this path takes us Yes, says the storyteller. Where does that path take them? Where does any path take anybody? Well, if you meet me here in a few days' time, I'll tell you exactly where that path led. And so will I. So until then, goodbye.